All right, guys, Shishi checking in for this fourth video on this four-part series about my plant medicine ayahuasca experience at Rivnia uh, here in Costa Rica. So uh, night four is called Yahe night. And essentially what they do at Rivnia is they bring in a bunch of shamans from a Colombian tradition called Yahe. And it's a strong, much stronger, more purgative brew. So the brew is made... In a way, um, not just in terms of the ingredients, it has a different ingredient called the chacruna root, which usually doesn't sit well with people's stomachs, but also it has an intention of really trying to purge out all of the negativity inside of you. So um, I, to this point, still had not puked, still hadn't had diarrhea, which are the two most common ways of purging. Uh, I had just yawned a lot. I had cried a few times on night one when I was going through the darkness and death stuff. And uh, I had cried tears of joy on night two. Night three, I didn't cry. I was just suffering. <laughs> and I had uh, yawned a lot, like I said, and then I had giggled and laughed. So I've been pretty lucky in terms of I'd had some pretty pleasurable purges as, uh, in terms of what's available on the menu of purging. But the shaman Chris told me on night one, he said, and he was so spot on, he said, yeah, you don't look like the kind of person that pukes much, but you, you might purge on Thursday because this drink is especially strong and especially purgative. And the ceremony on, on Thursday is a little bit different where the other ones you show up at around 5.30 and the ceremony goes until 1, 1.30ish. This ceremony starts at 7.30 and it goes all night until 9, 10 in the morning. And then you just go straight to breakfast. So it's intense. And um, it's also different because when you take the drink, you sit in silence for a bunch of hours instead of having music to listen to, which makes it more challenging and more of a meditative experience because sometimes the music can kind of help you get through the experience. Um, so yeah, we took, I took the first cup and I was very cautious after night three. I was like, I don't want to push it. I just want to enjoy myself, have fun. If I purge, I purge. But my intention was kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I already had felt like I had gotten so much insight from the first three nights. You know, at Rhythmia, they say you should have three in intentions. One is to show you who you become which totally happened for me on night one. It showed me all the darkness inside of me. Two is to uh, merge you with your soul. And three is to heal your heart. And they say that when you merge with your soul, which is the part of you that you sort of forgotten or neglected or didn't know you had, then the healing of your heart sort of follows automatically. And um, so night one, I sort of had the first intention come true. Night two, not so much of anything really. It was just very blissful. Had some powerful insights nonetheless. <coughs> it was really night three where I had the second and third come true where I realized I was a lot stronger than, than I've given myself credit for. So night four comes up and I'm just like, yo, I don't want to have a hard time. Like, just let me go through this. And so I just took one drink and for the first two hours, nothing. And this is what's so crazy about ayahuasca. It's so unpredictable. First two hours, nothing happens. Then they call for the second drink. I'm tempted to get a second drink, but something inside me tells me, yo, just chill, give it some time. <laughs> I walk outside two and a half hours after drinking the first drink, immediately just start tripping balls. I'm like just walking around and I wouldn't say it was necessarily like super fun or pleasurable, but I felt like my intention going into night three of being a beacon of love and hope for other people really came true on night four. I was kind of walking around and I almost felt like I was like this spiritual, on like spiritual patrol. So a lot of people were having really difficult experiences on night four. Um, and I was just walking around, sending them love, sending them love. If they're, if I felt like they needed it, even going in and hugging them and saying, Hey, you're going to be okay. Like, this is all part of the process. Like, don't be afraid, surrender. I love you. You're loved. And it was so beautiful to know that it almost felt like a culmination of the night, night one, knowing all this darkness inside of me, night two, realizing it's okay. Night three, realizing that I need to help myself first. And then night four, I was finally like, okay, you've learned about your darkness. You've learned you can alchemize it for good. You've learned how to take care of yourself. Now combine all of those three things and use all this raw energy and force and potential and help other people with it and give it to other people. And I felt like just this beacon of love for everybody. And at one point, closer to the end of the night, I started to feel some sort of like discomfort in my stomach, um, like some diarrhea coming on. So I went to the bathroom and I ended up going to the bathroom a couple times and, you know, it was pretty intense, but nothing that crazy for me, luckily. But I honestly felt like as it was sort of coming out of me, I felt like I was purging out. Finally, after years and years and years, I was getting rid of physically 
my need for acceptance, my need for fame. You know, as somebody who's trying to be an artist, um, I often feel like sometimes I wonder, I ask myself, am I doing this for fame? Am I doing this to become famous so people will love me? Or am I doing this for the purity of expressing music and my art and expressing myself authentically? And I've just always felt like, you know, I have a very agreeable, accepting, acceptable personality. Partially, it's just because I think I'm like a loving, good person. But also, there is a part of it that is just, I want people to like me. And sometimes that can be destructive because it can prevent you from speaking your truth when it's maybe uncomfortable or confrontational. And I remember as I was purging, I just felt like this need to be accepted was leaving my body. And when I came out of the bathroom, I just felt so much lighter, not just physically, but psycho, psycho, um, somatically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And I came out and they were playing this beautiful music and they were doing these healing circles where the shamans go around and heal everybody one by one. And it's so powerful and beautiful to watch and the energy in the room is off the charts. And I walked out and I heard the music and I just had this realization like, wow, like I'm an artist. I'm here on this earth to just express myself as honestly and genuinely as I can and be a source and a beacon for love, for good, for authenticity, and for truth. And sometimes that's going to mean being a bit of an asshole. Most of the time, it's going to mean being loving. Sometimes it's going to be confrontational. Sometimes it's going to be easy. Whatever it is, but those are my values, and I'm no longer going to allow what people think of me to dictate what I'm going to do because I'm so clear on that now. So... Yeah, this was a, a long series. Thank you for anybody who watched. And I, I just want to wrap this up by saying, because I know it's getting dark on my camera. I want to wrap this up by saying, um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, follow me at Shishi Music. All my music I post about there. And uh, obviously here on YouTube, I do these Shishi Meditations videos. And you know, I'm sure I'll continue to talk about the downloads that I've gotten through this experience more and more. But I just want to say for anybody out there who feels called to this medicine or is maybe nervous about it or, or is interested in it or maybe something I said caught your attention, feel free to message me on Instagram. If you have Instagram, just DM me at Shishi Music. I check them all. Um, or leave a comment on any of these videos and I'd be happy to help talk to you about the experience. And I can only say amazing things about Rhythmia. It's an incredible place, especially for your first time uh, trying out this plant medicine, this beautiful healing technology. So thank you guys for listening. Lots of love and namaste.